Every once in a while, there is an entity who is either born with or somehow during its lifetime is catalyzed or inspired into seeking beyond this bubble. Similar to the story of the Buddha, who pretty much had everything a human being, identified as the body, could ever want. You know, being a prince surrounded with fortunes and blessings and safety and security and everything a man could hope for, so to speak. And yet, being exposed, or at least so the story goes, being exposed to beggars and people living in the streets and old people and death, questions started to appear to this entity that urged it to ask as to the boundaries of its bubble, the validity of its bubble, and what the truth is beyond that bubble. And seeing that suffering firsthand outside of its own bubble, or at the fringes of its own bubble, the edges of its own bubble, it became inspired to seek for a solution for the suffering, an answer to the suffering. And so in a similar way, every once in a while there is a being, and there's more and more of us these days, that are really inspired to look beyond the conventional ideas, and that are born with or inspired with a sense that everything is possible, or at least that the solution to the suffering, that the truth, if you will, whatever that might be, the truth, the experiential inner truth, the truth of existence itself, can somehow be accessed, can somehow be realized by this mind-body-spirit complex. And therefore it is inspired because it believes it is possible. You see, it's very important to believe that enlightenment, and again, think of enlightenment as a spectrum or a gradient, a sliding scale. Don't think of it as black and white. It's not helpful for most people at most stages of this journey. So think of it as a spectrum, as a sliding scale, as a gradient. But it is important that we believe enlightenment or greater enlightenment, more and more enlightenment to be possible. If we don't believe it is possible, then how would we be inspired? How would we be inspired to use our attention in such a way as to maximize the probabilities of our increasing realization of the true self? So first of all, we have to believe that it exists. And I assume that to some degree, at least, you believe there is such a thing as enlightenment or this transformational awakening of what you really are to itself in a very deep, direct, experiential way. I assume that you to some degree believe that that is a possibility, that that exists, sorry, that it exists even. Then second of all, like I was saying, it is important that we believe that it is possible for us to actually directly experience this freedom, this truth, this liberation, this clarity, this transcendent state of self-realization or self-awareness. And it is very, very, very possible for every single individual hearing this today. And what a better time to explore this than now, when your external reality seemingly is forcing you to go within, to sequester yourself, to turn your attention to what is truly important for you, to take attention away from the externalities, the external situational experience of your day-to-day -day life, the bubble of your assumptions made manifest. What better opportunity, now that we are quarantined, which is just another word for joyfully in retreat with ourselves all around the world, and focus our intention, our efforts, our attention onto topics like these, onto ourselves, in a true way, in a way that perhaps some of you have never done before or even considered before. And so again, I'm very excited to be able to deliver this message to you today and to share in this type of exploration at a time like this. It is quite exciting. And uh, once again, thank you for being here. I encourage you to stick with this online retreat, even as things don't quite make sense yet to your intellect, because what you will find with material like this is that the most important aspect of it is the direct introduction to what's being spoken about. It's not so much about developing a conceptual framework or intellectual understanding 
of what is spoken about here. It is about this direct introduction to this message. And so the more that you're introduced to it in your own direct experience, because I'm just using my body to produce words for your body to perceive, to then interpret and give some meaning to, which then helps you guide your attention to a certain spot in your consciousness, to a certain quality in yourself. Right? So we're, we're having to deal with these tools, these distortions, these translation mechanisms, my brain, my vocal cords, your ears, your brain. But ultimately, and perhaps this is a bit too soon for some of you, but we'll get to this understanding. Ultimately, what's really going on here is that consciousness is actually speaking to itself through the illusion of these brains and these vocal cords and these lips and these ears and that brain and that interpreter. It really is a monologue of sorts. Um, and you will be able to recognize and realize this underlying unity, this ground of being, which is like the canvas to the painting or the screen onto which the movie is projected or the tablecloth, which is made of this one unison material, yet can be lifted up at different points in that tablecloth to the degree where it forms its own individuated mountain shapes. And these mountain shapes can begin to communicate to each other above the surface level, if you will. But the truth of it is that it is speaking to itself, that there is this great unity which binds all appearances, which brings me to one of the definitions of enlightenment or self-realization. And that is the realization of oneness, the realization of unity. Because as we deepen our awareness, and I will begin a guided meditation in a little bit to give you this initial introduction in your own direct experience, which is all that matters. It doesn't matter what I say, it doesn't matter what you hear, it doesn't matter what other people say, it doesn't matter what your mind thinks. What matters is that you develop a way to identify within yourself that possibility of which we have been speaking, to which we are hinting, to which we are pointing. The words are not the truth. They are merely the tools we use to help you guide your attention back onto its source. So why don't we just start right there, right now. Take a deep breath. 